every struggle, I thank God. For every oppression, I thank God. For every disappointment, I thank God. Because it lets me know if death couldn't stop her, my God still outweighs the pain I may be going through right now. Matter of fact, he's shifting your perspective for every pain, my God. It is actually rain for your seed. We're stepping into something new today. Is anybody, is any worshipers in here today? Is any worshipers in here today? Rain on us, Heavenly Father. Rain on us into you today, Lord God. That we're stepping into something new. That your word says that it's in your presence. It's the fullness. Saturate this place, Lord God. Saturate this pray place with your presence. That anything that's not of you, Lord God, it's not even room for you to sit in here, fill every space, fill your temple. We, we claim it right now. We claim it in the name of Jesus. Can I read this to you, family? I want to read Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. And I'm going to get some context behind it, but family, how many of you know we're stepping into something new? We're stepping into something new, family. It says in 28, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. Come on, somebody. He increases your strength. Even you shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. I, am I talking to anybody today? But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They should mount up with wings like eagles. If any eagles in a place today, if any eagles in a place today, matter of fact, when you leave out of here and you go out into the courtyard, we pulled up yesterday, I saw an eagle. And matter of fact, God, he, he spoke to me. He said, tell the people that there are, there, there are eagles. You have been created to be an eagle. So I'm telling you today, fly, my sister. Fly high, my brother. You are an you are eagle. You're not designed to sit in low places. You are an eagle, and the eagles are designed to spread their wings and begin to fly. Is there any eagles in the building today? They should run and not be weary. They should walk and not faint. I'm telling you this, family, because on the second Sunday, 15 years ago, on the second Sunday in September, a seed was planted into the earth called DC Metro Church. If you're new here, just to give you context, over 15 years ago, a seed on this day, come on, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We're here. God is still moving. Happy birthday. God can do it again. Happy birthday. Our God has not left us. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Over 15 years ago, a seed was planted. That seed was DC Metro Church. We known that seed to go from DC Metro Church to Metro Church. And now we're shifted into a season of celebration church where we have so much to celebrate. So when I'm giving you context and you understand why I'm reading this particular scripture, it's because eagles will always outweigh the storm. Through the design, an eagle will always outweigh the storm. When the storms have come your way, 
hear me today. You've been graced to win. You've been graced to win. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this new season. We thank you for all of the eagles that's in the place today. For all of our eagles that's all for our online family. We receive your word today, Heavenly Father, that it is time to soar. That it's time to spread our wings. That it's time not to sit on our gifts. That it's time to stir up the faith and the gift that you have placed inside of this home and this church. And it's time to soar to new levels. Take us higher than we have ever gone before, Lord. Show us new heights of you. Show us another aspect of you that we have never seen before. Take us deeper with your love. Begin to cast your vision for our life like have you have never seen before. Give us 2020 vision that trusts you like no other. It is in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Amen, amen, amen. You can go ahead and have your seat, family. Come on, all of our C students, middle and high school, you can go ahead and be shifted out. Your wonderful students are there. Come on. Happy birthday, family. Happy birthday, family. I'm loving this new season that we're in, family. And I love that the word that God has given me to share with the people today is that, yes, turn to your neighbor and say, you are an eagle. You are an eagle. I love the metaphors that the Bible uses when it comes to being an eagle. I, I, I love the metaphors that the Bible used to, to use the eagle as a metaphor of how we should live our life as a Christian. Come on. That, 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 when we look at an eagle, the eagle is a beautiful, this is God's work, family. Yeah. It is so fascinating that from wing to wing, nine feet long, an yeah. eagle will begin to spread his wings. Yeah. It's so beautiful that with this eagle, you can look at an eagle, Julius, and you can tell by the design that the eagle was designed to fly high. Yeah. And I'm telling you today that you have been graced to win yeah. through design. Come on. That when God created you, his word said that you are his handiwork. Yeah. Not only has God spoke to you, but God has put his hands on you. See, the enemy would love to tell you that you are not God's handiwork. But I'm here to remind you, my brother, I'm here to remind you, my sister, despite what your, your reality may look like, God's hand is still on you. God is still working in your life. The eagle is a beautiful creature that even when storms comes the eagle way, other birds will flee. Other birds will go seek shelter. But I love that the eagle will actually go in the direction of the storm. Yeah. Matter of fact, the eagle actually used the storm to rise up. The eagle will actually use the storm and begin to soar above the storm. Matter of fact, the storm that actually should have defeated the eagle, the eagle begins to use the storm as power to step into the new. Yeah. You can look over your life right now. Come on, just look back in your life. You can see some storms. That should have took you out. Yeah. You can look back over your life. You can see some storms that should have destroyed you. There's some storms that should have took you and your family out. I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The ugly. <laughs> but thank God that the storm did not take us out. I love the scripture in, in Romans 8, 28. Come on, family. We know that all things yes. work together. Not some things. Yes. Not just the things that we want. But I love, yes, God would take the good, the bad, and the ugly. He takes all the things, and he turns it into his favor for his good, for his purpose. Not our purpose, but his purpose. And he will use the pressure as power in your life to release you into something greater. See, I love an eagle because an eagle has great vision. Matter of fact, an eagle can fly so high, Mr. Terry, that 10,000 feet in the air, an eagle can see its destination. Yeah. 
an eagle can see the prey, that the eagle can see the, the, his opportunity for greater two miles in the sky, an eagle can see what's ahead of him. See, when I, when I study an eagle, that's the beautiful thing about an eagle is that not like humans, a human being, we, we only had what? 180 degree aspect ratio. We can only see what's in front of us and we can only see what's on side of us. But if you study an eagle, my God, an eagle has eyes that has 340 degrees. Not only can an eagle see far, but an eagle can see what's behind him. Yeah. So matter of fact, when an eagle is staring at his destination, an eagle can also see the enemy coming from behind. And here's what I'm telling you, family, that you are shifting into a season where you can see what's ahead of you, but you can also see what's behind you. And I'm telling you, just as an eagle can see far, I thank God for the Holy Spirit, because his word says that it goes before us but he's also the rewarder. He's behind you. He's watching you. Matter of fact, Psalms 139 verse 5 says it this way, family. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Hear me today, family. God has already gone before you. Not only has he gone before you, but he's also behind you. His hand is on your life. Is there any eagles in here today? And I'm not talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. I know it's football season, but receive the prophetic word today. And I'm shouting out the eagles, Pastor Keith. It is said that the greatest tragedy in life is not that people aim too high and miss. The greatest tragedy in life is actually people who aim low and hit. Eagles don't aim low. Eagles aim high. And here's what I'm telling you, family. Regardless of what your life looks like right now, we got to stop aiming low. You are not created to be a chicken. You are not created to be a parent who can only talk about it, but can't flap his wings. I'm speaking, preaching to some people today. You're not chickens. You're not parents. You are created to be an eagle. Why? Because it's through design. Your life, God is setting you up. Look at your story. Look at the very things that God has been orchestrating in your life. That he's turning it. For good, you need to tell yourself today that nothing's wasted. That when God is in your life, hear the word today, nothing is wasted. That broken piece, he can turn it into a masterpiece. That broken thing, he can bring it on into good. It is not wasted. That season wasn't for void. That season wasn't just in the vein. That season is actually part of the crown that he's putting together so that you can walk in his glory and under the purpose of why he created you. Your story is beautiful. I told the staff this week, come on, if you can't appreciate a love story without any pain. You can't appreciate a love story without a little bit of disappointment. You can't appreciate a love story if it never rains because when it rains, you appreciate the sunshine a little bit more. When you appreciate the sunshine a little bit more, you know that your God has always been with you. His word says that he will never leave you, that he will never forsake you. So I want you to even say it right now. Say, I'm graced for this. Oh, come on, church. I'm graced for this. Oh, come on. You have been built for this season of your life. That the very thing that God has called you to, that the vision is so big, but you are built for this, please hear God's word, it's time to fly. That it's time to fly. It's not time to sit on your hands. It is time to fly. And here's what God is saying. You got to stop speaking it. You got to stop because through design, you were created to win. If you're taking notes, family, I want you to write this down. Write this down. I'm grace to give birth again. I'm graced to give birth again. See, the beautiful thing about an eagle is that an eagle, even before the eaglet is hatched, I love that the mother eagle takes the egg to a high place. 
That I love that the, that the mother bird begins to go to a high place to prepare a place for the eaglet to be hatched, to give birth. Matter of fact, this nest is a beautiful thing. I've been, I've been doing some studying. Come on, National Geographic. Can I, come on, I, you know, Pastor Brennan said, man, you got to go watch National Geographic to make sure your eaglet and your eagle language is on par. You can't be out here just giving out wrong national Smithsonian information. So I did some homework this week. And what I love about the eagle's nest is that when the eagle is hatched, it only knows of a high place. As soon as the eagle comes out, the eaglet comes out of the egg, it has never experienced a low place. Through design, an eaglet comes out of the hatch, and the only thing that the eagle knows through experience with his mother is a high place. This is why his word said you got to seek things above. This is why his word said that you got to stay above with me because when I take you to a high place, I take your thoughts to a high place. I take your passion to a high place. I take your vision to a high place. If you cannot see what God is doing in your life, my question to you, are you in a high place with him? Because in a high place, God will begin to show you some things. Colossians 3 verse 1 says it this way, family. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2, I love it. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are, all, that are on the earth. Hear me, family. If you want to go high, we have to learn how to go low. If you want God to begin to elevate you in his presence, we have to learn how to go lower yeah. with him. If I can say it this way, in order to go high, we have to learn how to bend our knees. Yeah. And that's through prayer. Let prayer be the foundation of the promises that God had put inside you. You are giving birth to new things in this season. Yeah. And the only way to push it out is through prayer. Uh-huh. Push it out through prayer. Why? Because prayer will create miracles in your life. Prayer will begin to produce the supernatural in your life. Prayer will begin to saturate the very place that you are on right now. I'm telling you, prayer will actually begin to create a life so great that you will begin to live a life from the inside out. If prayer is not our foundation, here's the beautiful thing about an eagle's nest. An eagle's nest can hold the bird. Let prayer hold the very thing that God has created in your life. You have, to, you have to ground it through prayer. I, I wrote this down right now. If you are ready to give birth to fresh vision, add God to the equation. Add God to the equation. And I want to say it again. Maybe you tried that business idea before and it didn't work out. Try it again and add God to it. Maybe you try to step out and get that, that job, that career path that God has been calling you to. All I'm saying again, God is saying that he's birthed in something new in your life and he's getting ready to do it what? Again. And God is saying this time around, add me to the equation. This time around, put me in the center. This time around, begin to seek me first. Why? Because I'm getting ready to allow you to give birth again. Don't stop dreaming with God. Don't stop believing with God. Be why? Because God can do it again. He's given birth for you so that you can do it again. Verse number, I mean, point number two says it this way. I'm graced to be protected again. Amen. See, the beautiful thing about an eagle's nest, as I said, that an eagle's nest goes up high. It just sits on a cliff. It is so high, family. That the other birds, the other enemies, the other predators can't even fly that high to get to it. That the eaglet is protected by his mother in a high place. See, understand, I I don't know what you might have gone through in life, and maybe the enemy can remind us to not trust again. The enemy can either tell us to not love again. The enemy can, can, can easily tell us to not, don't, don't follow through with that because of a wasted season or, or a past season. But I'm telling you here today, God is here to protect you. His word said that he will never leave you. His word said that he will never forsake you. God is here to protect you for the very thing that he has called you to do. That he's walking with you. That the eagle's nest is a 
protected place. I want to say it this way, family, that the, that the safest place in life is actually in the will of God. Yes. Let me say it again. The safest place in your life is to stay in the will of God. In the will of God, God had love is always there, the banner of protection is always there. Psalms 18 verse 2 says it this way, family, the Lord is my protector. He is my strong fortress. My God is my protection. And with him, I am safe. He protects me like a shield. He defends me and keeps me safe. Come on, family. I call to the Lord and he saves me from my enemy. Praise the Lord. It may be football season and your, and your favorite team may not play no good defense today. But I'm here to tell you, God plays the best defense. God is always on the line. And God is always protecting your life. And his word says that he never sleeps, nor he does he slumber. Why? He's always watching over you and your family and what you're getting ready to shift into. Hear me today, family. God is protecting us. His hand never moves off of your life. You have to tell yourself that on a Wednesday. You have to tell yourself that on a Friday. You got to remind yourself, despite when a blow come, despite when a storm come, my heavenly father is still here protecting me. He will always protect us. I wrote this down in my notes. You're safe not because of the absence of danger, but rather because of the presence of God. Despite if danger comes, despite if danger goes, his presence is always here. And as long as his presence is always here, you are protected. Dream again. Birth again. Step out in faith again. Trust God again. Write the book again. Start the vision plan again. Come on, step out on faith. I'm, talk, I'm preaching to somebody in here. And God is saying it's time to get off your seat and begin to trust me again. Why? Because I'm protecting you. I'm protecting you. I'm walking with you. I'm getting ready to do something new in your life. And here's one of the reasons why, family, Here's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm saying step out in faith. Why? Because the church is a type of nest. The church represents a type of nest. This is the beautiful thing about, about God, that he will always orchestrate things in your life so that you never run def deficiency with relationships. That the church is designed so that we will always have relationships in our life so people can come beside you and pray and love and cheer you on. Be there, be there for the highs, come on family, and also be there for the lows. This is why I love the house of God that when I'm going through some stuff, I can call my brother. When you're going through some stuff, you can call your sister. Matter of fact, if I can plug groups that's getting ready to launch, you make sure that you step out in faith and join a group. Why? Because the nest is here. The nest is here to push you. Also, the nest is here to allow you to give fresh vision the birth of everything that God has placed inside of you. Hear me, hear me today, family. You can't give birth by yourself. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You can't. I, I never gave birth, but I threw <laughs> ice. There were some other people in the room yeah. with Pastor Brenda yeah. that she wasn't by herself, that she needed, yes, her husband, but she needed really the doctor. <laughs> And some more doctors. I was there squeezing her hand. She, her nails kind of, I still got some, some war marks right here from all three kids. But she didn't give birth by herself. She wasn't isolated. She wasn't alone. She had some help me. Come on, Pastor Brenda. You had some spiders. Come on, somebody. She had somebody there to help give birth for the very thing that God has placed inside of her. Maybe you've been in this season too long because you've been trying to give birth by yourself that you've been trying to push this thing out by yourself. That vision plan by yourself. Come on, come on. That, 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 that idea that you have started, maybe you started it all by yourself and God is saying that the right in here is room and even online, your help is in the room. Your testimony is in the room. Your prayer answer is in the room. 
That's why after this serve, you need to start just going up to everybody, tell them all your business. Well, maybe not all your business. <laughs> but tell them a little bit led by the Holy Spirit. And allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to the right person. Why? Because the nest is here to strengthen you. The nest is in a high place. The nest is protected. Hear this today, family. Come on. We're not a perfect church, but God's presence is here. And when God's presence is here, love is here. When God's presence is here, the supernatural is here. When God's presence is here, the miracles is here. Come on. Somebody. When God's presence is here, the love is here. When God's presence is here, your deliverance is here. When God's presence is here, your breakthrough is here. When God's presence is here, the vision for your life is here. Do not allow the enemy to stray you away from God's nest. Woo! I don't know who that's for, but the enemy will whisper to your ears because you are closer than you have ever been before. And he has sent his best enemies to you. He has sent an adversary to, to you just to destroy you to get away from the nest. But don't get away from the nest. Stay in the nest. Why? Because there's protection in the nest. It's health in the nest. Your blessing is in God's nest. It's in a high place. His love is in a high place. I'm a point number three. I'm getting ready to close out. Write this down. I'm graced to fly again. Amen. I'm graced to fly again. The nest is not designed to just keep you comfortable. The nest is also designed to release you. See, what I love about the eagle's nest is that when the, when the eaglet gets a certain size, the mother bird begins to disturb the nest. The eagle has got a little comfortable. Eaglet has got a, a little comfortable. And the, the mother bird begins to disturb the nest. And matter of fact, the only way that the eaglet can learn how to fly, the mother bird has to push the bird out. It's in the, it's in the air. They call it fledging. That the, it's when the eaglet begins to learn how to fly. You can't learn how to fly inside the nest. It's on the release. Yeah that you will learn how to fly high. It's in the release that you will learn how to soar to the very thing that God has created. It's in the release. And maybe, I don't know who I'm preaching to, maybe it's in here, maybe it's online, maybe God is disturbing some things in your life because it's time to fly to a higher level. It's time to fly to a new space. It's time to fly to a higher level of love. It's time to fly to a higher level of forgiveness that it's time to fly to a high level of trusting God in the unknown to a place you have never been before. God will disturb your nest so that he can take you deeper. God will disturb your nest so that you can step away from the shore. Can God still trust you in an uncomfortable season? Can, can, can God still trust you if he only shows you the next step? Can, can, can God still trust you when the disturbance happens that now your default is to always blame it on, not blame it on the enemy, but change your perspective and say, God, despite I don't agree with what's going on, I still trust you. I still give you my, my unreserved yes, that it doesn't belong to anybody else but you. That when you don't understand it, God still gets your yes. Can God disturb your nest? I wrote this down, 2 Timothy 1 and 6. I love this scripture. It says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the land on of my hands. Hear me today, church family. In order for us to fly, we have to disturb the gift that's inside of us. Stir it up. Stir it up, stir it up. That it's time to fly high. That it's time to fly high that you have ever flown before and maybe you've been sitting on your gifts way too long. Maybe you put that gift up on a shelf and God is saying of everything what I created for you to do, it's time to trust me again. Again, again, but, but I, if, again. Trust me again. 
What's the thing in your life that you need to trust God again about? Well, what's the thing that you have given up on that God has said that it's time to fly again? I, I know you might have took a loss in that Pacific area, but God is saying, try it again. Yes. Trust me. Try it again. In this season, it's time to give birth again. In this season, it's, it's, it's time to know God will protect you again. In this season, church family, that knowing God, God is saying that it's time to fly again. God is disturbing your nest for a reason. Because God wants to take you to a place you have never gone before. Trust him. Believe him. And know that he can, he can do it. I want to read this vision statement, family, as we're celebrating, as we get ready to close out. A vision statement for our church, even under our, our amazing leadership of our global senior pastor, Pastor Tim, Tim Lake. I want, I want us to read this, and you, to be honest, you're going to see this probably on our website and everything is, is fascinated what God is doing in this place. Welcome home. Welcome home. That God is getting ready to send new souls, new families. That God is moving in this place. I want to read it. It says, we believe our church is devoted to building engaged, passionate, and spiritually healthy people. We're devoted to engaging with and impacting one another and the communities that surround us. We believe that Jesus himself set an example of service, giving hope, love, and grace, that we've been given the responsibility to do the same. We believe our church is a worshiping church that usher in an env environment of healing and consistent life transformation. A sound so unique and distinct that it merges heaven and earth. We believe our church is committed to equipping and training leaders locally abroad to carry the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, representing one church with different locations. Come on, family. Reflecting his glorious church and making a global impact. Our hope is that our church is a place where every man, woman, and child walk through the doors and feels at home. A place where people representing all races, generations, and nations feel a sense of belonging. Our hope is to provide an environment of refuge and rescue, inspiring and nurture, nurturing the human spirit. Our hope is to provide an environment where people from all walks of life can come, be strengthened, and return to the various communities to give strength and courage to others. Our hope is that we will constantly pioneer a church that leads the charge in presenting a timeless message in excellence through media, music, film, art, and technology having a global impact on society and culture. Our hope is to educate and empower the next generation. Leaders anointed to bring about change across the globe. Above all, our hope is that we are a church that loves God and his people. A church focused on building strong relationships so that we might build strong communities. Being generous at heart and faithful in our confessions, we believe in our calling is to reach and disciple the lost, called to establish and develop relationships to do life together in community. This is modeled perfectly through the relationship of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, showing us that even God does not exist alone. So get ready to close out. We believe our calling is to go into all the world and share the good news with others. Mark 16, 15, providing opportunities to participate in local outreaches and efforts, as well as being agents of change through global missions and initiatives. Yes, we believe our calling is to be an oasis to those in need, a beacon of light for those trapped in bondage and in darkness a place of hope, grace, love, 
committed to bringing the truth of Christ to impossible situations, my God, who's dependent on Jesus, led by the Holy Spirit, and consumed with the Great Commission. This is our church. This is our hope. This is our calling. Come on, you can stand to your feet. Hear me today, family, you are grace to win. You are grace to win. As we get ready to go back into worship, I want to invite our prayer team out. Maybe, maybe that's you today. Maybe that's you today that, you, that you're dealing with hopeless, visionless, not seeing the next thing that's in your life. Here's what God is speaking today. Push it out in prayer. Push it out in prayer. As we get ready to go back into worship, let's come down. Our team is going to be here. They can be, our team can get ready to, uh, your team can come on down now. Come pray with us. Come pray with somebody. Why? Because it's time to give birth again. It's time to give birth again. Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you, we thank you for what you have done in this place. We thank you that you have created a environment for eagles to fly. That in this season, Heavenly Father, we are designed to fly high. That we are designed to soar to new heights. Breathe fresh breath into our lungs. Breathe fresh breath into everything that you're doing in this space. For every heartbreak, breathe fresh breath. For every disappointment, breathe fresh breath. We've been graced for this. They've been graced for this, Lord God, through design to fly high. Let us dream again. Let us dream again. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. If that's you in here, never want to leave this space of not doing an altar. And maybe in this time that, hey, maybe you didn't, you never gave your life to Christ or you want to rededicate your life back to Christ. Here's your moment to say yes again. Here's your moment to dream again. Here's your moment to step out in faith and trust God again. If, if that's you, no, no one's looking, just begin to stretch your hands out. I want you to repeat this prayer. We're all going to join in it as a family because we are the nest. And we're here to celebrate with you. We're here to grab your hand and walk the next step. Well, if you just repeat these words after me, if that's you in here, Heavenly Father, we, we love you. Repent that I'm a sinner. I thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying for me. I repent. I confess you as my Savior. Breathed in me. Live in me all the days of my life. I announce you as my Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, family, can we celebrate real quick? Come on, just begin to put your hands together. Hey, man, how's everybody doing? Everybody hold your arms out. We some eagles out here. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Hey, good people. We are, uh, we're coming up on groups. All right. So look to your left and look to your right. Your new best friend is in one of these groups. I'm telling you, we have so many different groups that you have. Um, Leah and I used to go to Cracker Barrel, but she does Zumba with her group. Saturday morning, so that's one of the many groups. But there's places that uh, that, that they meet up for, for lunch and for dinners, Bible study, um, so many different groups that you can join and be a part of. Please, 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 I know sometimes it can be overwhelming with a whole church. Sometimes you want that intimate connection with four to five or six or seven or eight, nine, ten people. And guess what? We have those groups. So absolutely look up. Click the QR code, go to our different various platforms of social media, sign up for a group. I can promise you and guarantee you will not regret it. Men's group, we're going to have the best group this year. Um, I'll make it a vow. So men, I need you to sign up so you don't make me look crazy, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, about those groups. Ladies! 
that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Family, wasn't it awesome to be home today? Welcome home and happy birthday celebration! And just as it was awesome to come together, both online and here in the sanctuary, there are a lot more seats that we need to fill. So on your way out, you grab a bunch of these Sit With Me cards. And when you're out and you see new people, you come in and you invite them. It says that the whole earth is groaning to be saved from the consequence of sin. People need to be in these seats. They need to feel loved and feel that they belong and this is the place for them. We are committed, Pastor Anthony said, for people to come through those doors and know that they are loved by God, by this church, and that they belong. And so invite, be an inviter, be a star inviter. You know what? I set up a challenge. I want y'all to come and brag about all the people that you've invited. We are going to set up a special time where you say, you know what? This whole section is me and my team. We're, we're awfully competitive. Uh, but, but we are because souls are at stake, family. Lives are at stake. People want deliverance. They want to belong. And so be an inviter and bring them here. Was well, much fun as we've had today. I gotta let y'all go home. So let us pray. May the Lord bless you abundantly indeed. May he keep you, keep your hands upon them all, Father God. May he shine his precious face upon you and his countenance towards you. Father God, destroy yokes and remove burdens this week in the lives of our people. Let us feel the refreshing wind. Help us, Father God, to open our wings and soar this week. Keep your hand upon us until we meet again. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.